Hello everyone and welcome back to Tea Time Crochet. Um, today we're going to be making this basket weave cowl. Um, it's kind of big, I can't fit it all in the camera. But um, I think it turned out really nice. And you know it's nice and squishy so it'll be really nice to wear in the cold weather. Um, we're getting, supposed to be getting down into uh, the negative degrees this coming week so it'll be nice to have something like this. Uh, this is the third and final of my gift or sets of my gift giving sets for Christmas and um, you could easily whip this up in a couple hours. It's you know it's quite it's you know a decent sized cowl but it's using bulky yarn and a large hook. Um, I believe it was a size 8 hook that I used. And um, I don't think that I mentioned this in the video, but I believe um, it took about two skeins for this, or a little less than two skeins. So keep that in mind. You To make this set, you would probably need about three skeins of bulky yarn. But I think it's really neat looking. It's very textured. And it's, like I said, it's very squishy. It'll keep whoever's going to be wearing it very warm. And, you know, it'll make a great gift. If you made the cowl and the headband, it would be, you know, a beautiful gift to give to somebody for Christmas. So um, I'm going to get to the tutorial now. Okay, you're going to need some bulky yarn. And this is a number five bulky yarn. It's just some yarn that I got from Hobby Lobby um, quite a while ago. And I've already just caked it up. And um, uh, I've had it in my stash for a while. So this is, it's by the Yarn Bee. And it's Tender Touch. And um, it says Willow there. And that's what they also are calling the color is Willow. And it's just a really pretty green and it is a number five bulky weight yarn so any number five will work you don't have to use this specific type of yarn um, you can find um, some really nice number five bulky weight yarns at Walmart that are fairly decent in price um, it calls for a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook, but I'm not going to be using that. I'm going to be going up to an 8 millimeter crochet hook. So this is just an 8 millimeter crochet hook. And then you're going to need some scissors, um, a yarn needle, you're going to need a measuring tape, and you may need some stitch markers. Um, it's always just nice to have them just in case you do need them. So we're going to start off with, um, you're going to need to measure how big that you want your cowl to be. Um, I've decided I want mine to be, um, 25, 26 inches, somewhere around there. So just measure it around your head to where you think that it feels nice. And you know it'll sit comfortably. Um, I'm going to make mine a little bit longer, so or longer in length or in width than length, because I want it to be a little bit scrunched up. So um, yeah, I think I'm probably going to do around 25 or 26. Um, that may change once I get my first foundation double crochet row um, done. Um, it just depends. I have not made this. I've, I've done this cowl before, but in a, in a smaller um, size. So we'll just have to see once I get there um, how exactly long I'll make it. And then I will let you know. The only thing you have to keep in mind is it has to be, your stitches have to be a multiple of eight. Because we're doing the basket weave 
um, stitch so it has to be a multiple of eight <clears throat> so what I like to do is I just um, when I am doing my first foundation row which is what we're going to start off with we're going to start off with a foundation double crochet I just do them in sets of eight and that's how I count them I'll just you know do eight and then I'll count eight more and then eight more and then eight more and then I'll measure and I'll try and get within that set of eight to the closest measurement um, that I can get so just keep that in mind it has to be a multiple of eight because for the basket we've stitched you have to have you know your multiple your sets of eight start off with a slip knot and um, we're just going to start our foundation double crochet row keeping in mind that you know they have to be multiples of eight so to start off our foundation double crochet row we're going to chain three so just like that and we're going to yarn over and we're going to go into this first chain and we're going to bring up a loop and then we're going to yarn over and bring um, one loop through this first loop here just through the first one hope that you're able to see that my lighting doesn't seem to be very good today for some reason so just through that first loop and we're just going to make a chain stitch there and then we're just going to finish out our double crochet as normal so through two and through two and we've just created our first uh, two double crochets and our foundation um, row all at once so again we're going to yarn over and we're going to go through that chain stitch that we made there pull up a loop and we're just going to yarn over and pull through this first loop here just once and I'm just going to put my finger on that and that lets me know that's where I need to go back into when I need to come back for the next stitch so once again yarn over go through that chain stitch pull up a loop chain one and then pull through two and pull through two so I'm just going to keep doing that until I get my length that I need with my multiples of eight that may be a little bit smaller and it may be a little bit over what I had originally thought that I wanted it how the length that I wanted it to be so you go ahead and figure out yours um, I would suggest that you take your head measurement mine is um, about one and a half inches and what you need to do is take your head measurement and add um, three or four more inches to it <clears throat> So I'm guessing that, you know, it's going to be somewhere around 26, depending on my multiples of eight, but somewhere in that range, you know, I would just take your head measurement and add, you know, three or four, five more inches, depending on how you like your cows. And that's a good, you know, starting point. And you can always, you know, keep chaining and then keep trying it on and you'll, you'll, by just you know connecting the ends you'll kind of get an idea of how big that's going to be so just go ahead and keep um, doing your foundation double crochets until you get your length and then I will meet up with you when I have finished mine okay I've completed a total of 56 stitches and that came out to being around 24 inches I know that's a little bit less than I said before, but I did try it around my neck and I think it's going to fit just fine. And that is a total of sets or seven sets of eight. So what we're going to do now is we're going to join to the top of our beginning 
it's your chain three here making sure that you don't have it twisted anywhere so this is going to be our first um, double crochet that we made here it's kind of made out of the chain three so we're just going to slip into the top of that that very top stitch and do a slip stitch to join it and then you just want to give that a little bit of a tug and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, put a little knot in this real quick to secure this bottom half. And you don't have to do this, but for me it tends to bug me. So I am I always wind up doing this. <laughs> And I'm just going to put, you know, this little knot to secure it. Nobody will see it. It's going to be on the inside. And that just closes up the bottom part. So this is where we're going to start our um, basket weave stitch. And all that is is just front post and back post um, in sets of four. So to start our sets of four, and the whole um, the whole pattern is sets of eight. So we have four sets of front post and four sets of back post, or back post and front post. Um, I think we'll start with front post and that's going to go around the front of the post through the, the center. So we normally would go in up here but we're actually going to go around like the leg of the stitch and I'm just going to pull this up a little bit and I'm going to chain one loosely and that's just going to give me a little bit of a leeway to go around this stitch. And we're going to do one of those front post double crochet in the next three stitches for a total of four stitches. So just like that. And then for the next stitch it next four stitches we're going to be doing back post so we're going to yarn over and go around the back of the post so just like that So this is the pa the pattern that we're creating. Um, this is going to be nice and flat, and this is going to have this ridged edge. So we're going to repeat this, um, this set of four, and then this set of four, all the way around for a total of seven sets of eight. So our sets of eight are these sections right here these two sets of four. So so we're going to do that a total of seven sets. So we're just going to repeat that. So the next section will be front post and then that for four stitches and then um, back post for four stitches and we're just going to repeat that all the way around. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the next set with you and then I will 
continue mine off of camera. So front post for the next four, and that's two, three, and four, and then back posts for the next four. So one, two, three, and four. So I hope that you're able to see the pattern. The camera seems to be having trouble focusing today for some reason. So that's the, the pattern we're creating. And then um, you're going to repeat that all the way around and I will meet up with you when I have completed all of my sets and I'm at the end of my row. Okay, so I've completed all of mine and you should end on a back post um, set of four because we we began with um, <clears throat> a front post set of four. So all you're going to do is just slip stitch to join into the top of this double crochet here. And that is the pattern that you should have. And it's a really neat pattern. It gives a lot of um, texture to your garment. And um, so we're going to do this for a total of four rows, uh, pattern rows. That's not including our foundation double crochet row. So we have done um, two rows, no, one row so far. And you'll have four of these ridges here. So I'm going to go ahead and complete three more rows in that pattern. And you're just basically going to front post on your front post and back post on your back post. Once you get the pattern set, you just kind of, you'll be able to see it and then know what you're supposed to do. So go ahead and do three more rows in this pattern. So that would be four front post here four back posts, and then you're just going to repeat all the way around. Um, you're continuing out the pattern that's already there. So go ahead and complete your um, three more rows. Okay, I've completed my four rows here. And how you can keep track of your rows is um, on your back post rows, it creates these ridges. And when you have four of those ridges, you know that you've done your four rows. It's just a little trick. Um, it, it will help <clears throat> in the long run just being able to glance at that and say, okay, I have this many ridges here. I need to do this. You know, I'm either done with my set of four or I am I need to do whatever. But um, that's just an easy way without having to go back and count each one just to look at the rows. And as long as you have four, you're good. So for the next set of four rows, we're going to be changing the pattern a little bit. Um, the pattern uh, going as we're building it is also a set of eight rows that we're going to repeat throughout the whole thing. This is the first four of that eight, this pattern that we did here. Now for the next four, we're going to reverse what we have already done here. So on our front post, we're going to do back post. And on our back post, we're going to do front post for the next four rows. So I have already slip stitched to join here. I'm going to chain one. And uh, we're going to do a back post on all one back post on each one of these front posts that we have here. So that's one, two, three, and four. So you can see how we're changing the pattern now. 
And that's what's going to give it that basket weave design. So for our next four, we're going to be doing front posts because these are back posts here. So we're going to be doing front posts on each one of those. One front post on each one. And then we're just going to continue with that pattern for a total of four rows. So our pattern repeat is eight rows. So we've already done our first four, which is this one. Now we're going to do our, our opposite rows or alternating rows for the next four. And then we're just going to repeat those eight rows for the link that we need our cow to be. So um, the next ones will be back posts because these are front posts here. And once you do this first row on this next set, uh, you'll just be able to look at the work and copy it the way that you did the first time. So just like that. Okay, so I've done my, done four back posts there. So we're gonna do four more front posts on these, um, on these set of four right here. So we're gonna do front posts there. So I hope that you're able to understand what I'm saying. So we're just going to continue doing that all the way around. And then I will meet up with you when I've completed my last stitch. So just remember that on our, we're doing the opposite of the row below. So on our front posts, we're going to do back posts, and on our back posts, we're going to do front posts. So go ahead and complete that, and then I will meet up with you at the end of this row. Okay, so I've completed my last stitch here, and I'm just going to slip stitch to join on top of this double crochet here. So now we're going to be following the pattern that we just made. <clears throat> So I'm going to chain one here and we're going to do four back post double crochet. Into the next four stitches, just like before. And then in the next four stitches, we're going to be doing our four or one front post double crochet in the next four stitches. So that's one, two, three, and four. And then in the next four, we're going to be doing back post, and we're just going to repeat that all the way around. You know, once you get your pattern established in the beginning, you pretty much just follow the pattern in the number of stitches. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing four rows of this pattern, and then we're going to start repeating this pattern on top of it. So when we complete the four rows, we're just going to reverse it again and then um, do 
four more rows of it. So every four rows, you're repeating um, this section, or every eight rows, you're repeating this section. Um, so once you're done with this four, uh, you'll just switch back to switching it again to where we're going to, on um, these back posts, we're going to put front posts, and on these front posts, we're going to put back posts, and it's going to create this block pattern. So every, so this is front post, and then this four rows is going to be, if you're looking up like in a row, because these will create like little block patterns. Um, if you're going to be looking up in like a row, um, this is going to be front post, this is going to be back post, and then the next one up would be front post, and then back post, and then front post. So um, every other uh, set of four rows, you're going to have the front post. So just remember that you're completing a set of four rows and then the pattern changes um, to the opposite of what you're on. I, I hope that makes sense. Um, this, is, this stitch is a little difficult to, un, to um, explain. But go ahead and just finish out your this row and then two more and then um, I will meet up with you when I have completed all of all of my four rows. Now remember, just an easy glance to find out how many rows you've done is these ridges. Once you have four of them, you know that you have done four. Okay, I've completed my four rows. So I have four ridges here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to repeat these eight rows until our cowl gets the length that we want it to be. And that's how long um, going this way we want it to be. So for the next set of four rows, um, you're just going to do the opposite of what's here. And you're just going to do that from, um, from here on out. When you're starting your first set of four, all you need to do is just look at the, the row that's below so and say, okay, this is a back post, so I know that I need to start a front post here. And that that is the beginning row of your set of four. And you can clearly um, just look at it and see, you know, the pattern. So go ahead and um, do however many rows you need to do com <sighs> Go, ever, go ahead and do however many rows that you need for the length of your cowl. Um, you need to keep it in at least the sets of four. Um, you don't have to complete out the whole set of eight if you don't want to, but make sure that you're keeping it in the pattern. So if you get... Um, to where you're almost done and you don't want to do continue on and do another set of eight just do whatever the next four is that's in that sequence so go ahead and do that and then I will I'm going to go ahead and go do mine and then I'll let you know how many rows I did um, when I have completed mine I'm not sure how many I'm going to do yet so um, I will meet up with you when I have completed all of mine. Okay, I finished mine, and I have done a total of two um, sets of the eight rows. I hope that you're able to see it all. It's a little bit big for my little space here, but... Um, so, here's the first set of four. And then our second set, which makes eight, and I did one more of those sets of eight. So, um, a total of 16 rows. So, this is how it turned out. It's nice and thick. It'll be really warm. It's really pretty. I like it. But you can really see the texture now.
So the last thing that you'll need to do is just to um, tie in all your ends or hide all your ends and then um, you're done and ready to give it as a gift. Um, stay tuned for the next video. It will be a matching headband in the same um, basket weave pattern and that will also be out today too. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.